Hello everybody, it's Gable House here. So you guys are about to embark on the art project. Um, this is a video I've put together to kind of give you guys an example of, uh, of what it is you guys are going to be doing in this project. Um, to start off with, um, the, the basic idea of what you're going to be doing is you guys are going to find a piece of art. Um, in this case I have chosen a piece of, uh, it's a whale uh, piece of clip art. Um, so I'm going to take this whale and I'm going to redo. I'm going to duplicate it using the parent functions and the Desmos graphing calculator. Now, before we can do any of that, you guys need to learn how to create piecewise functions in the Desmos graphing calculator. So let's start off by learning how to do that first. Let me close off my whale for a second here. So you guys want to write this down. Um, I'm going to write this here. If you guys will watch over here in this box, I'll write down kind of the general form and then we'll do an example. So what you're going to write is y is equal to curly braces, the conditions, colon, whatever your function is, curly brace. So this is the format you guys will use for creating your, um, creating your piecewise functions. Let's do a quick example of this here. So let's say I want to do uh, the function x squared. Uh, we're going to use the function x squared and let's just go from negative 5 to positive 5. So normally if we plug in x squared we get a huge parabola. Okay, And both ends of this parabola continue on uh, to uh, positive infinity. If we use our curly braces we can go, let's see if I can do all this right now, um, we're going to go from negative 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to positive 5 semicolon. And now if we scroll out a little bit we end up with we end up with a parabola that just goes out to x equals 5 and x equals to negative 5. We can restrict this even more. Let's only go from, let's only go to 0. So let's change from negative 5 to 0. Now we only get half of our, uh, half of our parabola. So um, you guys can repeat arguments here. So let's say um, I, what you can do is after you've added in your first piece of your parent function, you can do a comma. Oops, get out of that do a comma, and then repeat the whole process. So we're going to do a condition colon with a function again. So let's go now from, let's go from negative 10 less than or equal to x less than or equal to x less than or equal to, we'll go up to 0 since that was the other end of our function. And we'll do a colon, and let's use the function. Um, let's see here, what's a good function to use? Let's just use uh, let's just use x. We we'll use the linear function x, and we'll pull back here a little bit, and that allows me to generate my piecewise func function. So from negative 10 to 0, we have a, a uh, we have the function uh, y equals x, and then from 0 to 5, from 0 to 5, we have a parabola from y is equal to x squared. Okay. All right, so now you guys know how to type this into Desmos Graphing Calculator. Let's go back to our uh, back to my whale example, and we'll look at how you're going to go about reproducing this. All right, so we'll get rid of our piecewise function. Here's the whale. Let me zoom in here just a little bit. Okay, so there's our whale. I'm going to start off with. Um, with the eye here. So we have the eye here in the middle. The eye is a circle. You guys have a function for the uh, for the uh, for the for drawing a circle. It's uh, y is equal to the square root of the difference of uh, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared. So you guys can create a circle here. Um, let's see here. So it's here. So I did the head, and this was my eyeball. So I created a function. I have a radius of one fourth, and I centered it at twelve and a half and two, which matches up with the height and our with our x and y variables here for the center of that circle. So that creates the eye. The next part I did for the head is I created the top part of the head coming down here on the side. Again, it's a circular in shape, so I just use a circle again and I restricted it and that allowed me to create this green line that comes around. Same idea. I just restricted my domain. I decided, so I, um, to give you guys an idea here, pretty much where the front of the whale's head here hits here at um, x equals zero, I pretty much made that 
x equals 15. So I should be doing a perfect reproduction, or a more or less perfect reproduction of the whale, but with the front of the whale at 15 instead of at 0. Okay, and that's going to drive all of the equations that I have here. And I keep moving myself around here, bring around the front of the head, the, t the bottom part of the head here, the jawline, so on and so forth to create the head. Let's see what else. I Oops, I closed it off here. Okay, let's close that folder. And then I do, similarly, I use other parent functions like uh, absolute value or linear functions or the square root function, logarithm, so on and so forth, using all of the various parent functions available to me. And I just work myself around the body. Okay. Oh, let's get rid of one here. There we go. So I work myself around the body here. Let's go back to what I had here before here. So this was my first line when I first attempted to uh, draw the back of the whale here. I wanted it to have a little more curve to it. And in this case here, I used a quadratic function. And, oh no, I didn't. Which one would I use here? That's this one. I used a logarithmic function for this, uh, for this section of the back right here. But I didn't like the curvature to it. So I went back to a linear function to drop it back in. And I like that a little bit more. Okay, and that brings me around the, the back side of the tail. Okay, uh, we come to the tail now. And I did the underside of the tail. I used a rational function for that. You can look here. Uh, I restricted my domain again, colon, and then the function. You guys can use your, your function rules to, to place and move the function wherever you need to in order to get the right shape. Keep working our way around. We get the top part of the tail here. And then we get the second part of the tail. Keep working our way around the tail. All right, and that gives us the full tail here on the back side. So the only part left to do on the whale here is this lower fin. So we'll open up the fin here. Okay. And I started with a, what function I use here? I used a quadratic that I stretched out using one-fourth. So I made it really, really flat to create this bottom edge of the whale fin. And then I used a logarithm function to create the back side of the tail fin. Bringing it all together, creating my whale. All right. So that'll give you guys an idea of how to go about doing this. I'll let Mr. Buckley um, talk to you guys about his expectations for the project and other things that you guys can do in order to dress this up a little bit. Um, I do want to point out here, if we zoom in a little bit on my whale here, if we if we zoom back and we just look at it right now, this actually looks like a pretty good copy. This isn't quite the right fit here. If we zoom in a little bit more, you're going to see that uh, my points don't quite match up and stuff. There's gaps. Where the, where the functions meet. There's some overlap here and stuff along those lines. That's one thing you guys can do as a challenge when you guys are putting together your um, your pieces of artwork. Is you guys can figure out ways to make all of these gaps come together really, really cleanly. Because you guys are able to do that with your transformations and uh, solving for your x and y coordinates and your h and k's and all of that to figure out ways to make this all come together really, really cleanly. Um, I want to show you guys some other examples here. Um, this is a quick one that I put together just using a piece of clip art clip art of a whale. Um, there's other versions of this. This is one that was done um, of Mickey Mouse. This is a really famous drawing called Steamboat Willie. So there's Mickey Mouse. Uh, this is a minion from the uh, Despicable Me um, uh, movies. We have Hello Kitty. Okay, and then this is one, this is a student one. This is one when I first was introduced to this project. This is the one that I first saw. It was uh, people trying to reproduce the Mona Lisa um, using the parent functions, and we get something that looks like this. So you're actually able to really get very, very accurate um, when you guys are putting together your um, putting together your artwork pieces and stuff. So you guys have the opportunity to be really creative here and, and have some fun with uh, with the objects that you guys are creating. Um, I'll let Mr. Buckley uh, establish all of his expectations for the project. Um, have a great time. Enjoy yourselves.